You are holy and blameless before the Lord because of who you are in the Spirit. That is good news, folks. But unless you believe it, it's not going to do you any good. You have to believe this stuff. You have to say, yes, I hear it, I understand it, and I'm just going to go ahead and believe it. Like, what have you got to lose? Hello and good morning. I want to welcome you to Arrested and Free. My name is Julianne Harris and praise God, I have been arrested by God's goodness, His grace, His love, and His mercy. And I've been set free from fear and pain, anxiety, discontentment, and all the negative things that can happen to us in life, I've been set free from. And um, so today is July the 10th in the year of our Lord, 2022. Let me, I didn't look at my, got to look just right. <laughs> and in the year of our Lord, 2022. And I'm just so glad that you tuned in today. Yeah, I'm going to tweak with my top a little bit more. I don't know why I even bother because once I get into teaching, I don't even think about it. So, um, so I just wanted to pick up kind of where I left off last week. You know, I um, kind of did a crash landing as I do often. And I, I just wanted to expound on the idea once again of, remember this is the series of rooted and grounded, being rooted and grounded in God's love for you. And the scripture that I used last time was uh, 2 Corinthians 3.17. And it says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And so what does that look like in our life? you know are we free are we experiencing freedom each and every day of our life some of us aren't and and while that isn't a point of condemnation it's a point of exhortation to be like this is what jesus died for you to have was freedom freedom from what other people think freedom from what you think of yourself <laughs> but as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if you're walking around as a beat up, beat down Christian, um, there, that isn't freedom. And as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And so if you don't realize, if you don't contemplate, if you do not um, acknowledge the freedom, the spirit of the Lord that is on the inside of you, you will not experience the freedom that Jesus died for you to have. And so while this last week we celebrated um, the our Independence Day, you know, you have an Independence Day. Your individual Independence Day was the day that you <clears throat> believed on Jesus, the day that you accepted Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life. That's amazing. And, but most of us, we don't think about it. I'm guilty of this, you know, I'm guilty of, oh, it looks like I got some sunshine in here. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> hey, <laughs> this is the problem with having a studio in your, in your little apartment. <laughs> so, um, you know, our Independence Day is the day that we got born again. And if we don't think about it, if we don't con contemplate where we've come out of, just like the disciples that were in the boat freaking out, they're like, there's a storm. Um, there's resistance of what Jesus said was going to happen. Jesus said, let us get to the other side. In Mark 4, we looked at that last week. He said, let's get to the other side. And then resistance came and the disciples were like, we're doomed. We're going to die. How, how are we going to succeed in this? Not thinking of all the miracles that Jesus had done thus far. You guys, I want, this is, I know that I know that I know right now in this moment, the Holy Spirit is speaking through me to you that you need to write down all of the amazing things that God has done for you thus far. And as you start thinking and contemplating on those things, then guess what? This stuff, this world that we live in, this current resistance that we may be feeling, it just goes away. It, it, it doesn't go away. It, it goes away in our mind. It, it suddenly goes from this ginormous thing down to what it is, which is nothing. It's just resistance. But you have a word from God of where you're going. And that is to the other side. I know I make it sound simple, 
because it really is that simple. But sometimes it can be the hardest thing we can do because we are not proactively reminding ourselves of like, okay, God, you brought me out of this. You brought me out of this. You brought me out of this. Listen, you guys, this is where I'm at today is that, you know, when God puts things on your heart to maybe um, change directions, to maybe alter your current path, uh, when and and he does that by the peace and the desires of our heart. If you're delighting yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. What does that mean? Uh, we always like to look at it as, yeah, God will give me whatever I want if I'm delighting myself in him. Well, while that's true, he will not only give you, <clears throat> it's, it's not only that, but he gives you the desires. He will change the desires in your heart and then he will give it to you. So what does that look like? It looks like, okay, God, I'm going this direction. And I feel like, you know, I, I experienced this when I left Bible school. I was like, I'm going down to Texas and I'm going to serve uh, this ministry down there. They were missionaries to Mexico, but they had a home base in Texas. And so I was like, this is where I'm going. This is my desire. And then when I was there for a little bit, then suddenly I had a desire to move to San Antonio. And I was like, okay, God, this was not my plan. I, w I thought I was called to Brownsville and I was going to stay there forever. And so then I'm in San Antonio now and I'm making relationships, meeting people and, and really building a relationship with uh, some of my family that was down there that I didn't have relationship with before. And so, but I was called to San Antonio. This was my goal. My goal was to work in this church and my goal was to get a job in this church. So I served and I served and I served. You guys, I served so much. I actually ran a, <laughs> I ran a hot air balloon festival with this church. I don't know nothing about hot air balloons. I don't know nothing about anything I was doing, but I was serving because I knew that was the doorway to get a job there. So while I'm serving, 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 no job, it, it was like, they were like, I just don't know, just no jobs are opening up. And, and you know, we, we definitely want you, but we just don't have anything for you right now. And then I happened to call my brother and sister-in-law and there was a job opening just that day in the department where my sister-in-law worked. And so she was like, you should apply. and. And so I thought about it and um, I was like, well, okay, I'll apply. I mean, what an honor to work at the ministry that I uh, graduated from. And so I applied and I was like, God, if you, if you want me to work there, you just have to make it come to pass, right? And so, but that wasn't my plan because I was called to San Antonio. I was called to that church. This was the road I was going on. And so I apply and I get an interview and I get the job. And there were so many parts and pieces that just fell into place that made it beyond any shadow of a doubt that's where I was supposed to go. So now I'm moving back to Colorado, not because I really wanted to, but because I knew that's where God wanted me to go. So can you see what I'm talking about is if we understand, if we're rooted and grounded in God's love for us, then we can step out that way. I know that I know that God leads and directs us to what is good for us. Not only good for us, but good for the people that we're going to encounter. But a lot of us, we are like, no, you know, I could have, here's the deal. I could have stayed in Brownsville, Texas and still be doing a great work for God. But I know that wasn't God's best because I felt led by the desires of my heart to go elsewhere. It's, it's so simple, but we make it so hard because we have our idea of how it should go. And there's liberty. The Spirit of the Lord on the inside of us gives us liberty, gives us freedom from fearing that I'm going to make a wrong step. That's, that's why I brought all of this up is because we um, can become so almost paralyzed because we don't want to miss God. We don't want to do what God doesn't want us to do. But yet he's saying, okay, stop going this direction and let's turn this direction. And we're like, God, is that you? I don't want to get off path. Listen, that's where we have to come back and remind ourselves. Listen, I was radically saved. I was radically delivered from so many bad things, even when I wasn't contemplating whether or not this was God's will. Do you guys understand that that he wooed you, he drew you to a place to accept him as your Lord and Savior. 
even when you weren't concerned about whether or not you were doing what God wanted you to do. You know, there's balance to this and there's two sides to it because some people are like, I could care less what God, um, like it's not even, not that you could care less, but it's not even a thought. It's like, well, I'm going to get more money. So obviously that's where I need to go. No, not necessarily. And likewise, well, that would be a pay cut. So obviously that's not where I'm supposed to go. Hey, hey, God may call you someplace because he's wanting you to step into an area where you're depending on him for your pay, not your job. Do you understand that God is your provider? Period. God's your provider. It's not your job. Now, God provides for you through your job. But if he asks you to take a different job, he's still going to provide for you. Uh, We have this (laughs) saying at work where it's like, if it's God's will, it's his bill. (laughs) And it's so true. But that is so scary, because especially when it comes to finances, right? And so we let our finances dictate whether or not it's the will of God. Even though we may have a desire in our heart to go this direction, but we're like, oh man, but those finances, you know, oh, I'm getting paid more here, but I'm really not happy here. So I'll just stay here because my paycheck is good uh, versus God's going, hey, I got so much more to bless you with. I got so much more for you to do for the kingdom. I got got somebody for you to minister to. I got somebody that's going to minister to you. But you're not going to do it because of a paycheck. I don't know who I'm speaking to and I feel like I'm I'm just kind of uh, throwing a whole bunch. I'm like, uh, it's like a shotgun right now that I'm, I'm giving you. And I understand that and that's not my heart's desire. I want you to hear this and I want you to, to chew on it and I want you to believe it. And I want you to remember all the things that God's done for you thus far. And so if he's asking you to take a right here, when you're like on cruise control going straight, I would encourage you to think about all the things that he's done up until this point. Let me check my time. Okay, I'm good. Um, I want you to think about all the things he's done up until this point that has been for your good. You know, that's where that's where the disciples were at when they when they hit a storm. Because storms of life they come, and all it is is a it's a form of resistance of where you're going, of the path that God has on you. There may be resistance. Now, does that mean that every time we get resistance, we need to change track? No. What it means is, is we need to be rooted and grounded in God's love for us and that we're able to hear his voice. We're able to know what he's saying. We're able to, to hear him say, stop. So we stop. We are able to hear him say, turn left. So we turn left. This is where we have to be in this day and age, you guys. And, and he didn't make it difficult. He actually sent his spirit to dwell on the inside of us. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord is, we can rest in the fact that, hey, you know what? I, my mind right now doesn't know what to do in this situation, but I know that I have liberty. I have the spirit of the Lord on the inside of me. So I'm just going to quiet everything around me. I'm going to quiet my mind. I'm going to set everything aside. I'm going to, now there's practical sides too of, you know, um, this friend of mine, he calls it a, um, he calls it a decision tree. Sometimes we have to just draw out a decision tree. Like, um, okay, so if I decide this, why am I deciding this? Like, let's be real with ourselves. Uh, maybe there's a a new job, a, a different job somewhere. And, um, And so you say, okay, if I take this job, why am I taking this job? Uh, Is it because there's more money? Is it because it's in a different place in the country where um, I I think I would enjoy living? Um, Is it because there is notoriety that comes with it? Mm. If I don't take this job, why would I not take this job? Is it because I would be leaving a church family? I mean, yeah, I would be leaving a church family where I'm I'm thriving in the body of Christ. Would that be a reason that I wouldn't take the job? Would I not take the job because I'm just simply comfortable where I'm at? If I don't take the job, then how long do I stay at this job? 
right? So there's a decision tree, there's practicality that we can implement to help us hear God's voice in these things, in these issues in our lives, in these storms that come, in these changes in our heart's desires. There's practicality and there's things that we can do to um, to understand where God wants us to go in that in that moment, in that situation. It's not difficult. We make it difficult, but God has not made it difficult. And, and it seems like the more we worry about it and stress about it, the harder it becomes to hear his voice, to understand the desire of our heart. Is that a godly desire or is it not? Is it just my flesh saying, I don't like this resistance and I just want to turn off the road right now? <laughs> what is it? And only you can know that. And, and you can know it if your roots are being fed by God's love for you. If your roots are being fed to say, you know what, God, even if I take, if, if I get off the road right now, and maybe that's not what you wanted me to do, then I know because you love me so much and you have a purpose and a plan for my life, um, that you're going to let me know, oh, I shouldn't have got off the road here. Okay. So let's get back on the other road. Let's get back on. Maybe we have to take a detour to get back to that road. It doesn't matter because God loves you. And because you know his thoughts for you are good and not of evil. <clears throat> Let's go to that scripture right quick. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 29. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Another translation says a hope and a future. These are the thoughts that God's having towards you. This is being rooted and grounded in God's love to go, okay, whew, my mind's spinning right now. I don't understand how come the desires of my heart's changing. I, I don't understand what's going on. I, I, my mind is reeling, right? And that's where we go, we tap into the roots. We tap into the roots of God's love for us to go, but I know the thoughts and the plans that God has for me, thoughts of good and not of evil. And so I'm just going to tap into that place and let the other become clear. Let the other start to work itself out. I'm speaking to myself right now, you guys. There's, there's so much changing in this world. There's so much changing in our day-to-day -day life that sometimes our mind can just be spinning with it. You know, I, I know sometimes we have to, even when we go to pray, it's like we're praying these shotgun prayers like this and this and this. And, and there's so much that you want to pray about. And it's like, there's not enough time to just sit and pray about all of it. And so for me personally, I don't know how to pray. So I start praying in the spirit and I'm trying to get my mind to calm, to calm. How do we get our mind to calm is we tap into the roots because we're rooted and grounded in God's love for us. So in that moment, when our mind is spinning out of control, we tap in to God, you love me. Thank you, Lord, that I am praying the perfect prayer right now, that I'm praying my future. And, and as I focus on you, Lord, as I focus on your love for me, the other stuff is going to become clear. It's like they start to fall in like a puzzle piece. They all start to click. And that's freedom. That's freedom. And if you take a look around in our world today, un well, there's lots of people who believe in God that's not experiencing this, but let alone people who don't believe in God. There is no peace. There's no freedom. There's no um, centeredness of thoughts. I can know that I know that I know that we're getting to the other side, just like in Mark 4, in the boat, when the disciples, God, God himself, God became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus said to them, hey guys, get in the boat, we're going to the other side. And then a little resistance came, a lot of resistance came, and they buckled. They were like, oh my God, we're going to die. Once again, didn't have the Spirit of God on the inside of them, so they have more excuse than we do. What's our excuse? 
<laughs> let's look at that story right quick because I want you to see what happened when they got to the other side. You know, God gives you a word for a reason, for a purpose. And usually there is something amazing on the other side. When he says, go this way or turn off the road, you know, get your <laughs> shut off cruise control, slow down, take a right here. And here is a miraculous encounter. Here's a miracle waiting to happen in your life. And we're so distraught with the resistance, with the storm that we're in, but God gives you a word and, and this is what happened when they got to the other side. It says they came over onto the other side, this is in Mark chapter five, of the sea into the country of um, Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship immediately, there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Listen, you guys. As you read this story, I would encourage you to read Mark 5. Like, what was, why were they going to the other side? You know, Jesus could have said, Hey guys, get in the boat. We're going to go to the other side of the sea. And, um, and over there, we are going to encounter a man that has been um, tormented with demonic spirits. He's been demon possessed for years. And we're going to set him free. And he's, go it, it, he's going to be set free. Uh, you know, and that, I don't know, would it have played out differently? I don't know if it would have. But I'm here to tell you that, that God, this is how he operates. He doesn't give you the entire picture in your journey with him. No, he'll say, hey, get in the boat. Let's go to the other side. And then... <laughs> you're like, okay, all I know is I'm supposed to get to the other side. <laughs> I used to say this and I'm experiencing it more again uh, now more than ever is that like, you know, we like to have our five year plan and this is how it's going to work out between here and look that five years and this is how it's going to do. And I'm like, I don't, I don't, five years from now, I don't really have a vision. I, I have a long-term vision like it's way it's out there I don't know how far or close it is uh, but I do have that vision now how I get there I have no idea because it's got to be God it's certainly not going to be me but a lot of us we like to get those tangible goals we like to get those tangible visions while well, that's good if God places it in your heart then do it but it's like then it's like okay God what about next year what does it look like next year I got nothing. <laughs> I'm like, what about next month, Lord? <laughs> and God doesn't want it to be that way. He wants you to trust in him every single day. And, and while we may have a far distant goal or we may have, we know what our purpose is. I know my purpose is to share the word of God with people, to share these truths that have set me free. That is my purpose in this day, in this hour. The rest of it is all relationship with God. That's what it's about. And that's what God wants from you. And, and don't be the person where, God, where God's coming in and going, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? I've brought you this far. I've brought you out of drugs and out of alcohol and out of uh, sexual sin. And I've, I've brought you through um, sickness. I brought you through hard times in your finances. I've brought you out of all of that how is it that you have no faith today for what you are facing? How is it? I don't understand it either. But this is what I do know. Is I do know that if you ask God to open your eyes and reveal to you all the good things that he's done in your life thus far. And start writing those down. Start writing down and go, oh yeah, I remember when this happened and God radically saved me. And, and it could be big life events. It could be smaller life events of, of just knowing, knowing that in that moment, it was a divine intervention that saved my life in that moment. Write it down. And as you write it down, God becomes bigger. 
his power in your life, his good will towards you. Um, and then you pass down a verdict of God is good in this moment. God has nothing but good for me. I know the thoughts and plans that God has towards me, thoughts of good and not of evil, so that I have an expected end. What's your expected end? Are you expecting to crash and burn in this storm? Are you allowing this storm in your life, this resistance to allow you to crash and burn? It's up to you. Because guess what? God has supplied a way of escape. He has supplied everything that you need in this time, in this hour. And you could give over your freedom. You could give over your victory. I talk about this a lot. It's like you're taking off your crown. You're setting it at the enemy's feet. Who is already a loser. He's crushed. He's, he's done. He's a loser. What's your choice? So that's why I would encourage you today, you guys start writing it out. And as you pray about it, maybe you can only write one thing. And that one thing should be, I got born again. <laughs> that is the most powerful, most amazing miracle that ever was or ever will happen in your life is the fact that you are right with God, period. If that's the only thing you can write down, then do it and do it out of faith and be like, God, please reveal to me. Help me remember. Some of us, we've had so many supernatural things happen in our life. We don't even remember because we've let it slip. We don't think on it. You know, um, the, the founder of the ministry that I work for, it's amazing to me because every time he has something supernatural happen in his life where God does something supernatural for him, he writes it down and he attaches a date to it. And so when he tells the story, when he rehearses that victory, he attaches the date to it. He thinks on these things. And, and there, there was one encounter with God that he says that there's not a day that goes by in his life that he does not remember that day. That's amazing. And it's so much so that everyone that comes to the Bible school, like he says it so much, everyone knows the date. And so that's awesome. Do you have a date attached to it? I don't. I should be. I should. I should. But I don't because I don't rehearse it like I should. I know I don't. That's why, you know, these messages that I share, they're not only for you. They're for me. Because I need to write down all the good things that God's done for me. And then it helps us put our future, put our current circumstance, maybe our current storm, it helps us put it into perspective so that we can know, we can pass down the correct verdict that God is love and he loves me so much, he has nothing but good thoughts towards me that I know that I'm gonna walk through this situation, I'm gonna walk through this resistance, I'm gonna make the right decision, the one that God wants me to, and if I make the wrong one, he's still gonna bring me back to where I need to be. Man, I pray that this is blessing you. Uh, I'm really just kind of ministering off the cuff here the last couple of weeks because there's something going on in my life that I'm, I'm walking this out as I'm sharing it with you. What does this look like? What does it look like when the desires of your heart changes? What does that look like? And, but if you're delighting yourself in the Lord, like the word says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. What does that look like for you? Some of us just need to enter into desire to, um, uh, delighting ourselves in the Lord. How do you do that? You read the word, you pray in the spirit, you enter into thanksgiving and, and praise. Praise helps you do that. And you're like, okay, God, I open my heart to you, to whatever you want to do for me, through me, in me right now, in this moment, in everyday life, I am on board with you. That's delighting yourself. And then you can trust the desires of your heart, no matter if they change, no matter if it looks different, doesn't matter. You can trust it because you are passing down a verdict that God is good because you are rooted and grounded in his love for you. So my time is coming to an end. I'm going to go ahead and end it right here. I feel like I've said all that um, we can handle <laughs> at this moment. <laughs> so if this blessed you, I would encourage you to share it with other people. Um, and then I would also encourage you to subscribe. If you subscribe and hit the little bell, you will get a notification each and every time I post a new video. Otherwise, you can plan on a new video each and every Sunday morning here on my YouTube channel. 
Um, you can find me on Facebook at Arrested and Free. You can uh, follow me there. I'm not really doing much there, but you can follow me there. Um, or send me a text message. Give me a call at 970-919-0459. And, you know, just do that this week. I would encourage you, just write down what are the amazing things that God's done for me thus far. And start meditating on that. Start remembering where you were in that moment. Start remembering the scriptures that God, God will bring it back to you. He'll bring it back to your remembrance. He wants you to remember this more than you want to. But we got to take time to think. And I understand in this busy life, sometimes finding time to think seems really hard. But it's so worth it. And God's wanting that. That's meditating. That's spending time with Him. That's building relationship with Him and go, God, help me remember what you spoke to me in that moment. And He'll remind you. He hasn't forgotten. Praise God. So I pray uh, that you have a great week. Please let me know what you think of the message in the comments and I'll respond to you. And, and I just pray that you have a wonderful week and we'll see you next Sunday. Bye.